All right. Welcome back, guys. This is Off the Edge, episode 43, Cam. We are rocking and rolling, but we also are rocking and rolling because it is week four of the NFL season. And last night, um, I'll, I'll give the Packers credit for hanging in there, but man, the Lions looked like the Super man. Bowl contender. I've been saying they mm, are. They did. They did. The Packers came back a little bit later in the game, but to be honest, the first quarter, first half, to be honest, I was like, whoa, are the Packers going to blow them out 50 to 20? That's how the game felt, Jake. I'm not going to lie. There were some Packers fans that were that were watching the game, and I was calling out some of the Lions guys. I'm like, Sam Laporta this, Sam Laporta that. So I'm looking forward to diving into it. Uh, for the show today, but wow, what football? Uh, football is interesting this year, man. The Lions are looking dangerous, which is cool to see. It is cool to see. Um, I think the last time that they won a playoff game was '91, so <laughs> oh. it, it, it's it, it's good to see. It, it, like that's not even a knock on the fan base. I, like I'm happy for them that yeah. they're able to enjoy this, and I think. You know, there's kind of this thing out there that people, you know, keep spreading like, oh, we don't look at week one. You, you throw away week one and everything else makes more sense. Well, if you throw away week one, that's the win against the defending Super Bowl champion. So I think that's wrong on you, especially because <laughs> they were at home. Yeah. Um, but you want to throw it away? Fine. The The Lions defense looks for real. And that's yeah. that's impressive. Yeah, yeah, the Lions defense looks real. The defensive back, back, Jake, they had Aaron Jones on the top of his head. And I was telling somebody, I was like, that's what you want to see. You know, I was telling somebody else where they play basketball. So I'm like, that's like a point guard going down to play, you know, play defense against a center or vice versa. And that's just tough ball to do. A lot of times where you're in offense, you want to get the football out to the corners because you want that mismatch. But when those corners and safeties flipped Aaron Jones, dude, on his head like he was doing a somersault in gymnastics. I've never seen Aaron uh, Aaron Jones flip like that in the air, Jake. So the Lions are, have something special. Um, it's really cool to see. It's really cool to see that coaching staff get those guys prepared for football. You said 1991, Jake, since they went to a playoff game. I was born in 93, my guy, and I'm 30. So that's crazy to see. It's really cool to witness this, Jake. People are witnessing – a shift in an organization and I'm really happy to see it. Yeah, no, it, it is cool to see, right? Uh, it definitely is cool to see. And you're happy for uh, the lions fans and the Packers fans. It's like, I mean, Jordan love still looks like a baller. So I'm not too worried yeah. about you over the, there. The left hand throw Jake. He had, he, he was about to get a safety. He had it on the right hand and switched to the left, completed the pass. I'm like, he's him. <laughs> I mean that, that zero the guy's so good. He was able to complete a pass with no time remaining on the clock when he snapped it. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I had to throw that out there because it was triple zeros. And I, if I get, had a nickel for every time Al Michael said triple zero last night, I, I'd be rich. I mean, they're like, oh, yeah. by the way, <laughs> you know, and and uh, the rule here before we uh, go into paying some bills with the ad reads, the rule here, yeah. and this is very clearly stated in the NFL rule book, is that with the triple zeros, like once the game clock is at zero, it is done. There's there's no, yeah, we'll give you extra time. Kind of like, you know, we all know that they give the offense a little bit extra time. Otherwise, there would be a delay of game almost every play. Um, there's no, like, run. Like, it's not like you run through the bag at first base. It's like, no, you, sir, are out. Like, that. that's <laughs> it. Like, yeah. you are done. If it hits zero, you're done. And so, yeah, I mean, to be fair, I'm glad they, they didn't, you know, change it, even though they should have. Um, but to be fair, yeah, that shouldn't have counted. However, it didn't impact the game because they won 34 to 20. So <laughs> let, let's pump the brakes there. Um, before we get into week four, and I mean, we got a lot of matchups to talk about. Dolphins, Bills, Falcons, Jaguars in London. And if you have ESPN Plus, not giving them free advertising, but this is honestly <laughs> yeah. me, the consumer. I am going to be watching it. it they have this Toy Story animated like yeah. format. So I'll have the game on. But then on my iPad, you bet your ass I'm going to be putting that little Andy's toy room yeah. on my I want to see what it's about. Yeah, you got to, Jake. I mean, it's really cool to see the NFL really reach into different audiences. They're really trying to grow that four-year-old into a Bills fan, right? A Jets fan, a Rams fan. So it's really cool to see them um, capturing different audiences in cool different ways. And, yeah, man, I'm going to turn that thing on. Too. I'm just going to put the subtitles on, you know, put the volume on the other one. 
we'll put the subtitles on for the Nickel that uh, Toy Story game. Yeah, no, I absolutely love it. Um, the Nickelodeon one, I'm kind of iffy on, uh, but I thought this was kind of just cooler. Um, this is a, something I've never seen before. We're also going to be touching on the, the Ravens-Browns game, which I think could be interesting. Um, yeah. Your Bucks are taking on the Saints. That's a great rivalry there. The Rams take on the Colts. The Commanders take on the Eagles. And the Patriots are going to take on the Cowboys. Um, and, and there's some other stuff that we'll talk about as well. Uh, before we dive into that, just letting you guys know that Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs this season. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and car games available to play right from your phone head to the website today and use our promo code believe to receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit bet online where the game starts but cam i'm not gonna lie one thing i'll be doing this weekend is playing some underdog fantasy trying to make some money this weekend uh where can our listeners our viewers go uh to get in on that action yeah, you can start doing this today, ladies and gents. But you can start playing fantasy football and underdog fantasy. Users users will receive a hundred percent deposit match up to one hundred dollars if they use our promo code OTE at sign up. You can click the link in the description to get started. Not tomorrow, Jake. Today. <laughs> today, Cam. Today. Uh, I was I was a little close. All right. I, I'm not gonna lie. You know the whole pick 'em thing. I I was pretty close last night. Yeah. Uh, was one away, and Aaron Jones uh, couldn't get receiving yards. As a matter of fact, he had negative four to end the night, so that was that was grand. I wow. needed, I think it was nineteen. Normally, that he had what over a hundred receiving yards in, his, in the first game of the year. Um, anyway, <laughs> let let's get started. So we're gonna dive right into it. The Dolphins three and zero taking on the Bills. This is in Buffalo. I love this game. I think this represents exactly what, you know, first off division football should look like, um, yep. not your O and three versus your O and three. No, like this is for a pretty big piece of the pie. My guy, this yeah. is a huge tiebreaker opportunity for the dolphins three and O on the road. By the way, they're two and O on the road. They've only played one home game. The dolphins have, um, I'm looking at this game. The Bills, they got a good defense. They've been turning quarterbacks over. I don't think they're going to be turning to a Tiger Vailoa over, who is the hottest quarterback in the NFL right now. This is the hottest offense. They're coming off 70 points last week. That's about as good as it gets, Cam. Yeah. So I got the Dolphins in this one. I know the Bills are two and a half point favorites. That's considered a Dolphins win by the books, my guy. You get three <laughs> points for just being a favorite at home, right? Yeah. They're getting two and a half. So Vegas is saying Dolphins are the favorite here. I'm going to lean towards Vegas here. I'm going to say the Dolphins win this game 33 to 30, my guy. Oh, I like it, Jake. A close game. I think this we I know I said it week one. I think it was it was a Chargers and the Dolphins. I was like, this is the AFC championship game. The way the Chargers have been playing. I know it's week four now. I'm going to have to shift that. Um, to maybe this game, right? The Bills. I know we got the Chiefs as well, so it's either the it's either the the Chargers, the Bills, or the Chiefs. Um, but this game might be the game of the week, Jake. Um, the way that the defense is playing, like you mentioned, uh, for the Bills is super impressive. Um, even seeing Jordan Poirier, Jake, just I think my man has an interception each game. Uh, he's playing out lights out. Um, the the defense, the linebackers for the Bills, they're playing lights out. The defensive line, so. It's really good to see. Um, and uh, Josh Allen, thank God, he's moving the ball forward because week one, it didn't look good. So it's it's really cool now to see him at his highest level. Um, Devon Achen, right? Not, it's not A-Chain. It's, it's, it's pronounced a little bit different now. Um, he had 200 yards last week. Um, and then Raheem Mostert had 82. I would expect that to, to shift a little bit this week, right? Because people are going to be keying in on Devon. Like, hey, if he comes in the game, watch out for him. But Raheem Mostert is that guy. And I think he's going to cause some problems for that Bills defense. I do think that the I do think that the Bills are going to fall to the Dolphins as well, Jake. I'm going to call this game 27, um, Dolphins 24. The Billies, I do believe Tyreek Tyre Hill is, might get kept in check just a little bit this game because if Jalen Waddle was back, right, I know he – He's kind of, you know, uh, figuring out that injury there, but he's going to possibly be back for this game. So I, I would expect for him to go off a little bit. And that offense, man, we think about just 
Um, we think about the previous game against the Broncos and how they blew them out. But um, it, it's really cool. I know someone asked me, hey, how come they didn't they didn't take that knee there? And I was like, well, you know, Mike McDaniel, I know he wanted to crush Sean Payton, but he didn't want to put the nail in the coffin, right? He put the top on the coffin box, but he, put, he didn't put the nail in it. So respect for that. But I do think they'll get the win this week. The Dolphins will. Yeah, um, it's funny. Tyree Kill on his podcast said, man, we, we believe in karma and we didn't want any bad karma if we did that. Yeah. And it's funny because it's like, man, that's where you drew the line. The 70 points is fine, but 73, no. Uh, records are meant to be broken. Um, they decided not to break the record. I do think they win the game. I think the best chance for the Bills here is to establish the run early on with James Cook. Uh, yeah. The guy has 267 yards on 44 carries this year. Hasn't found pay dirt. Uh, I don't know why, but he hasn't. Um, they don't really run it enough with him, in my opinion. I think he's absolutely the deciding factor of this game. If they use him enough, I think they can steal this win. Um, and get turnovers. I, if they get turnovers on Tua, but like you said, I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah, I'm not expecting that to happen. I think Tyree Hill is going to be a handful with the motions. I think now A-Chan is going to change the game because the offense is already really hard to stop. But then you have to keep yeah. in mind, A-Chan was hurt. So he comes back, and that's what you see. So it's scary. There's a lot of speed. Um, to, to put it in Cam's words, it's spooky out there. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. But, <laughs> Ooh. But, uh, <laughs> hey, I mean, we're, we're getting closer to Halloween, so there it is what go. it is. But, um, but no, I'm going to take the, the Dolphins here. I just think there's too much. I, I really think they're a better team. And uh, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I hope they pan up to Ken Dorsey, who's up there, uh, you know, in the coach's box, coaching up top, offensive coordinator uh, again, because yeah. that was hilarious. That was meme worthy last year, if you remember. They called. I think they went for it on fourth down, incomplete, and then he started just rip it up paper and <laughs> just throw it a fit. And like, he looked like a petulant child and it was he hilarious. Might do it again. He might do it again this year. Cause Mike McDaniel, <laughs> he takes souls, man. You see how he took a Bill Belichick. soul after he ran at the end of the game in the camera run, he kind of snatched his soul away on that one. So he might do the same thing for the defensive coordinators for the bills. <laughs> oh my God. That just, that cracks me up, man. When he was running away, I just love that guy. Anyway, yeah. let's move on to the London game. 9 30 AM eastern time uh man you're gonna have to get up early <laughs> yeah yeah or just watch some nfl plus you know at the you know after the game call it a day there <laughs> yeah uh the two and one falcons head to london to take on the jacksonville jaguars who are one and two jacksonville is coming off a 17 point beat down uh, a blowout if you will against their rival texans against a rookie quarterback okay I, i'm not gonna keep beating that home but still i thought that was crazy uh at home by the way all right now i'm done um, <laughs> <laughs> the falcons however they went up against a really tough lions team that kept him in check pretty much the whole game they weren't able to do anything incredibly frustrating i, I do wonder the jaguars got guys like josh allen they got guys uh like trayvon walker you know, you have Andre Cisco in the back so, end of the There you go, Jake. <laughs> you there know, I'd mention him uh, in the back end of the secondary. Tyson Campbell, what he does. I, I do wonder if this is a game where we could see your guy Heineke. And the reason I say that is because this is a lot of pressure for Desmond Ritter. This team yeah. started out 2 0. They lost to the Lions. They did not look good. And now we know this defense, it held a pretty good Lions team in check. We know this defense is legit. We know they have a decent team. If they come out there and it is just not a good performance in London, I could see a benching in the middle of that game. I think, you know, just to add a spark, I could see it at halftime. Yeah. Um, there, this is, this is tough. You're not getting yeah. a three and O Jaguars team. You're getting a one and two Jaguars team. That's going to be a little desperate and, Let's be honest here. They've played in London so much. They got the home crowd. This is a home yeah. game for the Jaguars. Yeah, yeah. The Jaguars owner, I know he has business out there. I think he might be from there. They might have started those London games anyway. So <clears throat> I think, like you said, the home game, uh, the fans, I think, are going to be out there in full effect. Um, when it comes to the Falcons, Jake, I know Desmond Ritter got sacked seven times against the Lions. Uh, Aiden, Hutch uh, Aiden Hutchinson had a day 
for himself. And I do think when you think about the Jaguars defense, <clears throat> what that looks like, right? You mentioned Josh Allen, not the quarterback, Josh Allen. And then Olu Kuhn, right? The linebacker, 14 tackles with two sacks. He's going to cause pressure for Desmond Ritter. I'm not sure they're going to, they're going to bench Desmond mid game, but it could be possible. I do. I think I, I do. It. You could see. Yeah, it could be possible. Right. What does that look like in Andy's uh, bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> brutal are they gonna show like a weird like a crane like you know the the claw yeah, comes in takes desmond out and just drops it like i i honestly don't know <laughs> yeah maybe maybe the uh i know uh woody and the oh the girl that uh hurts the sheep she has that cane maybe she just snags desmond out and then throws you know uh he uh kind of he pops out mr potato heads you know body there who who knows how creative toy story can get here <laughs> <laughs> um, it'll be quite interesting, but I do know Jake that when it comes to the, the Jaguars offense, that there are going to be some, some fireworks, right? Trevor Lawrence, um, is, is playing pretty, pretty decent. Okay. He had an 85% quarterback rating, uh, last week. She's a, she's a Stroud, mind you, had a, had a better rating than, um, but you think about their, just their run game, Travis Etienne, 88 yards, um, not bad there. And then tank big speed as well. You know, you got some guys that can run the football. So, you know, it's going to be a close game. I think Jake It's going to be a close game. I don't think it's going to be a complete blowout. Um, but I do, I do see, I do see the Jacksonville Jaguars taking advantage of the Atlanta Falcons on this one. So I'm going to go for this game, Jake, I'm going to go 14 to 17 Jacksonville. I think it's going to be a close one because don't forget Jesse Bates is on that defense for the Falcons. And I do think, that the Falcons are going to control the turnover margin or be a little least close to the turnover margin or winning it. So it's going to be a good one. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. I mean, here's, here's how I see it. These two played last year um, or, or two years ago, I think it was, but um, I, I see this being a close game. I'm going to go, I think maybe a garbage time touchdown to kind of seal the deal 24 or 13. I think it's not going to be like super fun. So I think everyone should watch the toy story version. If you ask me, but um, yeah, I just, I don't see this being a fun game. I see this yeah. being a very sloppy, ugly London game, you know, yeah. like something that you would expect when you're, you're traveling that far. This is the first of the season. I mean, we're going to see a Germany game this year. Uh, there's some wild games cam that we're going to be covering, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the the Falcons. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna take the Jaguars 24-13 in this one. 24-13, um, nice. Moving on away from Toy Story here, we got <laughs> two and one Ravens versus the two and one Browns. And I love Lamar Jackson, and I did like the Ravens coming in. But man, I can't believe I'm saying this. I had him winning five or six games this year. I have the Browns winning this game, man. Mm -hmm. I think that they responded the best way possible after losing their heart and soul of their offense. Big Chubb. Uh, just you watch Deshaun Watson and just yeah. the way he elevated his game. And then, you know, Ford finding the end zone twice. And Kareem Hunt is going to get more acclimated. He's not totally in football shape. He hasn't gotten hits. Things like that. He took that whole offseason off, essentially. So he'll get going at some point. Amari Cooper, I mean, he's so he's on so much fire right now that the refs are trying to take away touchdowns that aren't even, you know, <laughs> like out of bounds. Like, did you see that call the other day? Like, insanity. He never stepped out. And they're like, yeah, he stepped out. Like, man, they're just trying to take stuff away like, from my guy, like, Amari. Like, like Tutu Atwell had that one call taken away, too. So, hey, officiating, get your stuff together, Boom. but no big deal. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but we're talking about offense because – do we really have to talk about their defense? Look at the Browns' defense. I think the Browns might have the best defense in football right now. Yeah, I thought the Jets would be, but at this point, the Browns, count them. Yeah, and so, you know, I see potential here to really steamroll the Ravens. And the reason I say that is because while I love Lamar Jackson, I do believe he's better than Deshaun Watson. There's an adjustment. Uh, there's definitely an adjustment period here because – when you look at Lamar Jackson, he's not in your Greg Roman style offense anymore. He's in more of a pro style offense. I think this is by working with Monken, I think this is going to pay serious div dividends for the future. But right now he's going to go through those growing pains. It's almost like a rookie quarterback. He's never been in this style offense before. 
we've started to see like you know kind of changing the protections and things like that he got sacked like five six times last week against the colts i mean it was brutal and so I think the Browns are better than the Colts, and I think that's going to be a problem for him. And also, they're going to have to commit to running the ball way more with Gus Edwards. I, I'm sorry. The guy's running well, and they, they give it to him like 10 times. I understand yeah. he has some injury issues, and you have to try to keep him healthy. Um, you don't really have a choice. You, you got to run the ball. Yeah, no, I agree. Run the damn ball. We've been talking about that, Jake, because the run opens up the pass, right? We talked about that for the Titans. Is Tannehill is not looking great because the run game is trash, right? We need Derrick Henry to step up there, but we'll talk about them a little bit later. This Baltimore Ravens team, right? You mentioned Melvin Gordon before in our one of our last shows, right? Turning back the clock a little bit with his skill there. That's really good. He ended up having like 10 carries. I was like, what? (laughs) (laughs) What's going on? Right. But then you think about just the Baltimore, Baltimore Ravens. The turnover margin, Jake, we always talk about this. I feel like I'm blue in the face by saying this, but I think it's going to be the most important thing we talk about. The quarterback position, them being healthy, and then the turnover margin, what that looks like. Kenyon Drake, unfortunately, had a fumble, right, against the against the Colts, and uh, Lamar Jackson did too. And so that's credit to the Colts' defense. I think they're number one and number two in the takeaway categories. Is it forced fumbles, TFLs? They're number one in a lot of them. So I think that's important. Um, they they put some pressure on Lamar Jackson, which he didn't which he didn't do well against. You just go to the Cleveland Browns. You think about Miles Garrett. A man had three and a half sacks against Ryan Tannehill, who is not a slow quarterback, Jake. My man can escape the pocket. So the fact that he had three and a half sacks, I mean, you think about um, the Watt brother, you think about Miles Garrett, like think about defensive players of the year. These guys are in the running for it because that's that's insane. You talk about Halloween's coming up. Miles Garrett's going to have Ryan Tannehill in the front of his lawn, three and a half sacks right on that tombstone that he has. I'm I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to seeing that. I mean, that's it's good it's good stuff, my man. And then you think about you talked about. Deshaun Watson, just the type of game he's having, the type of ball he's playing. Um, 123 quarterback rating, uh, 27 for 33. Jake, we talk about it. That's almost a perfect game. If you can get between maybe five throws that um, of re- receptions, if your number is close between that five and eight, that means a receiver probably dropped it or whatever. But he had close to a perfect game, 289 yards, two touchdowns, um, pretty daggone impressive. So, I do think that the Browns are going to pull this one out, Jake, uh, just because the Colts have laid down that framework on how to beat the Ravens. So I do think the Browns are going to win, but I think it's going to be a close game as well. I like to have my games within three points. So I'm going to go um, – this one before, but I'm going to go 21-17 to 17 Browns because they win the turnover margin this game. I'll take your 21 to 17 and copy you. I'm going 21, yeah. 17 Browns. Uh, I think they're right now. I might've been wrong about them. I'm just going to say that right now. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> I did not. I didn't, I didn't see it happening, but I mean, this defense is that good. We've been talking about for a while, their defense really, but it's down to Sean Watson. Like if he continues to play like that, yeah. Um, I, I was, I felt very good after that game i know it was against the titans but felt very good after that game the way deshaun watson kind of you know responded yeah. um a wins a win too it wins a win in the nfl too they're hard to come by because some teams are going to have three wins on the season so if you get your win call it a day <laughs> no absolutely and, and furthermore uh we got a uh, Two teams that hate each other. The Buccaneers, two and one, taking oh. on the two and one Saints. There is some bad blood there. Uh Tom Brady Mike, struggled against Mike the Evans Saints. and Lattimore. Mike Evans and Lattimore. It's, Mike Evans Lattimore. There's a popcorn. lot of there's a lot of storylines. <laughs> but one of them is the fact that let's just let's be honest with ourselves. Jameis Winston could start this game against the oh. former Buccaneers. <laughs> storyline so, for your ass. Uh, that's you it. Know, <laughs> we love our storylines. Well, that's a storyline for you. Yeah. I don't think they should stare a car for this game at all. No. I, I don't. Um, what did I bring up on, on the show the last time when we were talking about his injury? I said Ryan Clark said something about, oh, he had the same issue, right? And uh, it's uh, I forget what it was the the shoulder issue. He said oh, he couldn't lift joint. his shoulder yeah. in the AC joint. He couldn't lift his his arm until they they gave him the shot before the game. Crazy. Like, 
crazy. That's not who I want being a quarterback. I don't. If no. you have that, I'm like, all right, you you figure you out. <laughs> roll, out. roll with Jamison and, and Taysom. Okay, like yeah. that. And, and, and Jameis is going to be fired up this game. We know that. Like the W when he's eating his fingers, that was against the Saints. So Jameis got a lot of jokes for that, I'm sure, from the Saints players. I'm sure the fans are, are crushing him right now. But Jameis is going to be fired up, Jake. Jameis is going to be leading those folks out the tunnel. And I played with Jameis. I played with him when we played the Saints. It's going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> Let's just call it that. Of course, a healthy one. You know, no one's going to really get injured like that unless it's Mike Evans and Lattimore because – those guys do not like each other. You can go back and see the tape. Uh, my wife, Veronique, is like, wait. Like, she, she'll go to the game. She'll see him play, and you'll just see Latim or Mike Evans just jumping on Latim or throwing bowls like they're in USC. To be honest, that's not meant for our game. That game. We shouldn't allow that in our game. So, Mike Evans, take it easy, my guy. Take it easy this game. I want to see a clean game and clean ball. But I do think with this game – being the way it is with Jameis Winston starting, it's going to be a one point game. I'm gonna call. It's going to be a one point game. They're gonna someone's gonna win by that uh, that extra point, um, whatever it is. But I think it's gonna be a one point game. I'm gonna call Buccaneers 21. I'm gonna call Saints 20. <laughs> I just got just gonna call it there now. I think the Bucks. Um, I think the Bucks gonna pull this one out. Yeah, uh, two good defenses. You know, so it's not. Not an easy pick here. Um, Derek Carr, shoulder, was a spectator yesterday. We're recording this on a Friday. Derek Carr, Thursday's practice was a spectator. So we're talking about a guy who still has not practiced. Uh, This could change tonight. uh, You know, he he could end up practicing on Friday. I don't like his chances. And I really think he should not play. Um, Because you made a significant investment in him. And this is still a team that... I'm not going to say they don't need this game because they definitely need this game. I think yeah. any any of these divisional games, especially in the NFC South. They count as two. Well, they count as three in the NFC South. There you go. I mean, the, <laughs> I mean let's be honest here. You look at last year with Tom Brady and the Bucs, they, they snuck into the playoffs. I mean, yeah. that was they're all beating the crap out of each other. So. The Buccaneers, they need to respond. They were undefeated. They got kind of embarrassed at home on Monday Night Football. Um, (laughs) Jalen Carr. (laughs) (laughs) Jalen Carr was brutal. Um, (laughs) But they still are going up against that. Like Carl Granderson, like I said, and he just got paid. Did you see that? He just got paid. So Carl Granderson, you know, obviously Cam Jordan, guys like that. Mario Davis. Mario Davis. So and Marshawn Lattimore, of course. So I, I love the way Chris Olave's been playing. I think Jameis and Olave will keep this game close. Um as well as oh, the defense. Al- Alvin Kamara's back. Oh, snap. <laughs> he is. I'm still going with the Bucks. I, I, I go I'm going I'm gonna go twenty four twenty three. I, I think it's gonna be another one point win for this uh one point loss rather. Uh, for the Saints here, um, yeah. I think the Bucks win the game. Pers- Let, let's be honest here, okay? Like playing at you know where the Saints play at the the Superdome, yeah. I think that helps an offense, right? So yeah, it's it's kind of funny. Like I, it's I loud would, in there. It's loud in there. I don't know there. if I'd want to play in Tampa offensively. I think like kind of playing in a dome, like you feel like, I think it's just, it's a faster environment, so to speak. And I think it's going to bode well for the Buccaneers. And it has in the past. Um, I think just honestly, Tom Brady has been kind of the issue. He has not played well (laughs) against the saints. Tom Brady's not out there. It's Baker Mayfield. So I'll never say Baker Mayfield's better than Brady, but maybe against the saints, he might be. He might be, you know, to be honest, Jake, that that Superdome is loud as all get out. Try try being on the punt team, Jake, backed up in your own end zone when that that crowd is jumping, right? Cam Jordan, Demario Davis just gets a sack on, on Jameis when he was there, and then we got to punt out of our end zone and try to stop the returner from scoring because, you know, they're on their own 40 or whatever. So that don't get super loud. Those New Orleans Saints fans are some of the best fans, so – Shout out to them, but they're going to be sad. Uh, I think they're going to be sad. Alvin Kamara getting back. He's going to try to figure out his game, Jake. They're going to be sad. (laughs) 
they're happy, but they're going to be they're a happy group, great group, jovial group, but they're going to be sad. I, I think Alvin Kamara is going to figure out, hey, okay, <clears throat> I'm back in this game, and I think Devin White and Levante are going to welcome him back <laughs> nicely to the football game. Uh, he's going to have fresh legs, but I do think he's going to take a beating a little bit. Um, Shaq Barrett, I think – He's going to go off this game. I think he's going to get out for Jameis J- um, a little bit. And I think this whole team is, you know, this whole Buccaneers team is because, like you said, they got embarrassed last week. And so they got embarrassed yeah. against the Super Bowl contenders. And so they do know to to make it to the playoffs. They, like you said, they got to win this. This is this counts as three, two or three points um, towards the end of the season. Because when it comes to playoff contention, it's one or the other. Hey, you know, hey, not everybody can go to the dance a lot of the time. So, they have to win these games early on, and I do think this Bucks defense wins the turnover margin against Jameis like they did in practice all the time when uh, he was there. <laughs> that's how, you know, it, it, that's really all it should take. Um, yeah. We move on to a game that has kind of gone back and forth with Vegas. Now it's at an even pick em. The Rams head to Indy to take on the Colts. The Colts are surprising 2-1 and one coming off a hell of a win uh, on the road in Baltimore uh, where their kicker, former Rams kicker Matt Gay, broke a record for most 50-yard field goals, 50-plus yard field goals made in a game. Uh, he had four of them. The Rams are coming off a brutal loss on the road to the Bengals Monday Night Football in a game where... It's weird, right? Because if you talk to anybody before the season, they would have signed up for a three-point loss to Joe Burrow and the Bengals on Monday Football on the road in a whiteout environment. But going into that game with an injured Burrow, the Rams were pretty much expected to win that game, no issue by some people. And there was an issue. And I think (laughs) people didn't really take Lou Anarumo seriously. And I think once again, this could be an issue as well with Gus Bradley and his defense. Yeah, yeah. Jake, I do. We all, we talked about this too. We're blue in the face. Run the damn ball. I know we said it on shows all week. We got to run the ball. You got to get Kyron Williams moving. And then I will hope, Jake, that this practice, these practices this past week, that Matthew Stafford and Kyron working on that little dump pass because they're going to get pressure. Zaire, Zaire Franklin, EJ Speed, those guys can be bringing a pressure on Matthew Stafford. So that little dump pass to Kyron, Kyron's got to lick it in, take it down the field because that's something that they missed on um, last week, Jake, and it was against the Bengals, and it was bad, man. Like they missed about four to five easy, easy like layups, and, and that can't happen this game because the way that, that the Colts are playing – talked about it they're number one and two in takeaways intercept they're they're number one and two in all these takeaway categories and for the rams to win they have to win the takeover margin i mean turnover margin they have to and when it comes to puka nakua to to at will keep doing what you're doing young fellas keep um catching that football and getting up field but i'm a big play van van, van jefferson I'm going to need it today, Jake, uh, this week. I'm going to need it. I don't know about you. We talk about the trade deadlines coming up in of October, buddy. Van, I'm going to need you, big dog, whether it be for the Rams or for the next team you're playing for, because to win these football games, we're going to lose two. We lost to the 49ers, and we already lost last week to the Bengals. So these are two Super Bowl contending teams. So this week you got the Colts. Must win if Anthony Anthony Richardson comes back or Gardner Minshew, whoever's back there, you they got to get after their ass because if not, Rams are in for a long season again. <laughs> yeah, it, it's going to be tough too, uh, especially for the Rams side. Uh, Ryan Kelly's expected to be back for the Colts as well as uh, starting quarterback, franchise quarterback, hopeful Anthony Richardson. So that's that's going to be fun. Yeah, kind of. Uh, if you're a Rams fan, it's not, but, um, but no, with the Rams, Ben Skoranek showed up on the injury report, Tyler Higby showed up and uh, so did Alaric brutal. Jackson brutal. and Higby did not practice on Thursday with an Achilles. Oh no. I mean, that's Aaron Rodgers, Kobe Bryant, Kevin Durant. You hear Achilles and you just get supremely worried. So Aaron like, Rodgers. don't know. Aaron Rodgers, doc, the the doctor that did uh, Aaron Rodgers and Kobe's Achilles, just give him a call. Say, hey, what he's do on you staff do? with the Rams. Neil Alatrash. <laughs> oh, there you go, Neil. There you go, Neil. Check out that Achilles. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm a little, you know, I'm I'm a little concerned there. Um, 
but I do think, you know, if he, if he can't go, Bryson Hopkins showed up in the Super Bowl, So I'm not exactly worried about that. Yeah. Um, could see the rookie fifth round pick out of Clemson Davis Allen. Yeah. Um, you know, so there. There, there's something there, you know, Skoranek being out, I, I think he'd be one of the emergency tight ends. So, yeah. it, you know, hopefully he's good to go. But I look at this team and this Colts team has been just willing to run the football. Zach Moss has 48 carries to Kyron Williams, 39. And Zach Moss missed the first game of the season. Um, so, you know, that's something <laughs> to keep in mind. And he's got 210 yards and a touchdown. He also has a receiving touchdown. You look at Michael Pittman, you know, one of the the better 50-50 yeah. ball guys in the game. So you look at this and you're like, I mean, this this could be a fun game. I'm going to take the Rams in this one, 27-17. Uh, one, one thing here, one key ingredient. Aaron Donald, since he joined the Rams... Rookie quarterbacks are one in seven against the Aaron Donald Rams. Only yeah. Tua Tagovailoa has beaten them. And that game, he didn't do much of anything. He had about a hundred <laughs> yards passing and Brian Flores defense just ate Jared Goff alive. So <laughs> yeah. this is a little different. Um, that stat is brought to you uh, courtesy of JB long, the voice of the LA Rams. He mentioned nice. it on between the horns podcast. So I wanted to give him a shout out. Um, JB. But, 24-21 Rams. I'm going 24-21 Rams. You're going 24-21? Okay. Yeah, you I go. got a 10-point win. I think this is going to be a game, and I think at the end the Rams pull away. Um, reason being, I think DeMarco Farr said it best on between the horns. Right now the ball is not bouncing the Rams away, but when it does, it comes in droves. Yeah. And I think this is an opportunity – Anthony Richardson coming off, you know, his concussion protocol, missing a game. Yikes. I could see him while he was into like the game and like he was, he was into like the whole, you know, just playing weekly. And now he was, you know, he had that, um, what's the word I'm looking for that <laughs> it's just, that was like his routine, if you will. Yeah. yeah. And now you take him out of his routine after a week, a, a young foggy. quarterback. A little foggy there. I, I could see it. And so yeah. I could see some turnovers in this game by a Rams defense that got one last week and knows mm -hmm. like, Hey, if, if anything comes up like last week with the offense, we got to step up. Yeah. And so I think Akella Akella Witherspoon, Witherspoon yeah. you know, is somebody to look out for because who's more, who's the most likely going to get the 50, 50 ball. Is it going to yeah. be, you know, Pittman or is it going to be, you know, somebody like Josh Downs over the middle? No, yeah. it's going to be Pittman. And so I think Akello could could snag another one this week. And um, the Kobe Durant, the, uh, the Kobe has to step up this game. Jake, we talked about it last year, intercepting the football and having more return yards than anyone in the, in the NFL. I think he's going to have that this week as well. I would love to see Byron Young uh, get off as well, Jake. I know sacks, strip sacks, and then our guy Hoyt and uh, Darion Kendrick. I need those two specifically to have a baller game, whether it be a takeaway. Whatever it is, but I want to see a splash play, and I want to see fewer dropbacks from Hoyt, Jake, because I'm going to lose my nugget if I see him drop back more than four times this week. And I'm going to I'm going to tweet it. I'm going to do something, but if he drops back more than four times, I'm going to lose my stuff. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather have you dropping back in coverage, Cam. If I'm being honest with you, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know how much football shape you're in right now, but <laughs> you could go out there and you could cover DK Metcalf a little bit better than uh, Hoyt. And to yeah. be fair, Hoyt is being put on an Island at 310 pounds. So it's not uh, entirely his fault. Like it's, this is crazy. Uh, hearing that, Jake. He's 310 dropping back, covering DJ Metcalf as a curl flat player. Uh, it's like Jamar Ch chase. He's covering chase. Like, like, what are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> I don't know, man, but I'll tell you right now, the Colts defense is no joke. 11 yeah. sacks or 11 or 12 sacks in the first three games of the season. One of the best defenses right now in football. That's not being talked about your guys. Zaire Franklin is on the team. Yeah. You got, you know, Shaq Leonard, you got EJ speed, um, obviously DeForest Buckner, you know, and then Quiddy Pay and Rams know him very well. Samson Yubukam, who's only gotten yeah. better since he left the Rams. I mean, this guy yeah. has really turned into something. Um, yeah. What I'm very curious about as we kind of wrap up this uh, little segment, 
Matthew Stafford testing out the young secondary of the Colts. Yeah. And what I mean by that is Juju Brents, who was one of the guys I think you you liked in this past draft. Mm-hmm. Um, he is, he made his first start last week and looked good against Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson ain't Matthew Stafford. They're yeah, they different don't, they type don't have of quarterbacks. Puka, Puka, they, they, you know, they have Puka Nakua over there and Tutu Atwell, so good luck. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, the the hope is I think, you know, we get a good game out of this, and I think we will. Um, these two, it's either – it's weird. I mean, I remember Tavon Austin had three touchdowns against the Colts. The last time they were there, though, the Rams did win, and it came down to a Carson Wentz uh, injury – Jacob Eason comes in, throws a pick to Jalen Ramsey Mm. to seal it. So we'll see what happens. Um, But yeah, we both have the Rams in this one. And then the commanders taking on the Eagles two and one commanders coming off a nightmare of a game against the bills um, where let's be honest, Sam Howell was just unacceptably bad Four interceptions, not going to win you football games that way. Mm -hmm. The Eagles are three and oh, and they probably had the most impressive win, I would say, against the Buccaneers. I, yeah. I have not been overly impressed with them uh, through three, um, but I thought the Buccaneers game, because Jalen didn't look great once again, but it was the defense just asserting their dominance. Um, and, and so I, I think uh, this, is a, this is an interesting one. It's a divisional matchup. Um, quick cam, uh, I almost fell off my chair. Quick cam. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm going to, and this chair is awful. I am going to go with the, the Eagles here. I think they go into week five, four, no, I think they're the better football team, but I think it's going to be a close one. Cause I, again, I've said it. I love Jalen hurts. I thought he was going to win the MVP. Now I don't think he has a shot in hell. And the reason is because I think he's hurt. I think he's Ooh. playing injured um and i think he's kind of already you know admitted that but uh, i think the commanders are going to get to him i think there's going to be a strip sack or a huge pick maybe by um you know somebody out there in the secondary you know (laughs) but uh you know i i could definitely see that and so i'm going to say the eagles sneak out with this win 20 to 17 uh in philly i think it's going to be a weird game i really do Okay, and you mentioned the interception, maybe Emmanuel Forbes for, for the Washington football That's team. That's what I was yeah. trying to think of. There you go. All I was good. Like, I can't remember. <laughs> Emmanuel Forbes, uh, Forbes is a great, great athlete. We do think he will uh, come away with one at some point um, because Jalen Hurts had two inter- two interceptions thrown. Uh, against the Buccaneers, and that's not great ball. That's not great ball. Like you said, he might be hurt with the seventy-one quarterback, seventy-one percent quarterback rating. Um, I know the Washington Football Team, Jake. They lost the game, but thirty-seven to three against the Billies, and the Eagles have a better defensive line than the Billies do, Jake. And I do think that football is going to be up in the air for the Eagles to catch it and run with it. Um, so I'm going to call this game thirty to seven. Eagles because the way that the Eagles um, handled the Buccaneers 25 to 11, um, I do think they'll do this. They'll do the same thing this week. Like Jalen Carter, sorry, not Jalen Carter. Yeah, Jalen Carter went off against uh, against the Bucks there, um, and I think he'll do the same thing this week. Uh, DeAndre Swift, <laughs> what they say, this is the the real uh, Kelsey and Swift combination that we like, as in uh, Jason Kelsey the center and DeAndre <laughs> Swift. So I do what are think. The yeah, what are the odds there? I mean, come on. But this guy, uh, Swift, with 130 yards against the Buccaneers, Jake. Um, there was the or, script, Cam. <laughs> there, there you go. That's the, that's the script right there. Um, but, you know, I think um, Swift is going to have a similar game this week against the Washington football team, even though they have a good defensive line. But uh, Swifty, with Swifty, it doesn't matter. So this game, like I said, I'm going to go 30-7 to seven, um, Eagles. Yeah, and then we're going to – Get into our quick hitters here after this. We want to have a little bit more discussion on the one and two Patriots taking on the two and one Cowboys. I think there's a lot to to pick apart from this. Um, Mac Jones is playing good ball. I mean, he's still hitting people in the balls, but you know, there's 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 still that going on. Uh, Sauce Gardner pointed it out. I mean, I don't I don't know why the guy is determined to be the next Grayson Allen, and that's not something I would aspire to be. Um, 
I guess, you know, then again, that would be him missing wide open layups. Wow. So that's, uh, that's nutty, Max bro. done that before. That's nutty. Um, <laughs> that's nutty. See what you did there? Uh, <laughs> wow. Wow. I had so, to. I had to. Yeah. No, you had to. Um, so, yeah, the Patriots, let's talk about them for a sec. Our guy, Christian Gonzalez, looks like an absolute star. Okay. Yeah. Uh, still don't know why. Cam, I, I mean, I, I don't I don't get it. Every year there's a player that's clear and obvious, a top five, top ten talent that falls a little bit. And, and I, I don't know why Christian Gonzalez fell, but I didn't know why Derwin James fell. So, Ooh. I mean, it, it's just another one of those guys. Um, I think he's going to shadow CD lamb in this one. And so yeah. I think it's going to put some pressure. Cowboys are six and a half point favorites. Cam the over under on this is 43 and a half. So Vegas thinks this is going to be a really low scoring game. And they think Dallas is going to win by maybe a touchdown. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to, to say. I mean, I think the Patriots defense First off, they're the only defense to make any sort of attempt at stopping Tua. Mm -hmm. Um, They also looked good against the Eagles, and they blew that game. And then they beat the Jets, who, let's be honest, they probably should have crushed the Jets with how poorly Zach Wilson played. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to look at it like that. I'm going to look at it like the defense is really good. Yeah. And Bill is is in his bag. I'm also going to say I think the Cowboys bounce back. Um, Yeah. I don't think it's enough to beat the Cowboys because if it's Mac Jones versus Dak Prescott, say what you will about Dak, Dak's better than Mac. Okay. Uh, he, yeah. he is. Um, I think Tony Pollard is the key to this game. You run the ball with Tony yeah. Pollard, you keep it on the Cowboys side. And I think that's what the, the Cowboys intend to do. I think Tony Pollard is going to be a problem for the Patriots. Uh, Cause he can help you as a pass catcher. He can help you as a runner. I think the Cowboys win this game. 24 20 i like okay so i think the oh. patriots cover okay i'm gonna say 21 14 this game jake because of that jet score uh, i know the jets defense is really good but yeah the fact yeah i'm <laughs> gonna yeah go to, yeah i'm gonna go 21 24 this game you're talking about the running game that's gonna be the most important part for this game uh, the patriots defense uh, you mentioned it they they're really they're pretty damn decent um they held dalvin cook and Brees hall to 18 yards <laughs> that's that's kind of wild so i know when you talk about tony pollard being a great back i think he'll have more than that i would think maybe 70 to 80 for this game but at the same time way matthew judon is playing i don't know jake so it's gonna be really interesting to see where the run game goes here so if they start putting the ball in the air what does that look like and i do think when it comes to mac jones i know last other week against the jets he was 15 for 29 three 201 yards and 85 percent quarterback rating so he played pretty decent but i, I do think um i do think the the uh, sorry the cowboys are gonna come out with this one they got embarrassed last week let's just you know full stop they got embarrassed against the cardinals it probably shouldn't have happened i don't know dig the Diggs brother was out and you know we talk about dan quinn got to has to figure it out dan quinn's gonna be pissed he's going against bill belichick he's gonna throw all all the stuff at all the stops at the wall so i do think the cowboys come away with the win here uh 21 14 um, I do think uh, when it comes to the turnover turnover margin, I think Michael Parsons goes off, right? All that. We talked about the uh, <laughs> hitting folks in the nuts. That's not cool. I know Michael Parsons probably already shouted out on his podcast, and I'm sure he's pissed. He's like, dude, that better not happen to me because, yeah, it just better not. And so I do think the Cowboys are, are, are going to take what Sauce Gardner posted on social media. I was like, all right. We got you. We're, we're not gonna. We're gonna take your ball away. How about that? <laughs> not the balls away. The ball away. We're gonna take your <laughs> ball away multiple times. And I think I think the Cowboys are gonna win the turnover margin by taking the balls away. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's such a shame because Mac is having a good year, but now this is what we're talking about, and that's on him. <laughs> that's that's not on anybody else but him. Two and one Kansas City Chiefs led by the Swifties are taking on the one and two Jets. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this Dumb. is one of those. Hey, it looks really good on paper coming into the season on Sunday Night Football games. Yeah. But I mean, man, 
are we going to see Trevor Simeon in this game? I mean, I think so. Like, I think it's yeah. going to get that bad. This is the um, bench game. I don't think Desmond Ritter, would he get benched? I, I don't know about that one, but this is the game that I think we'll see someone get benched uh, first quarter or second quarter. Yeah, I, it's, it's not good. I, we're not feeling <laughs> good about this one. No, nope. yeah, um, Dub for the Chiefs. I mean, I got the Jets helmet in the back. You know, I, I have a soft spot for the Jets. Covered them last year. Yeah. I, this, this ain't gonna be that, pretty tuck that under somewhere <laughs> yeah this, this this ain't gonna be pretty um i'm gonna say the chiefs win this game uh it, it's a shame because i still think the defense is gonna play well but yeah. i just think i mean you play defense you can't be on the field the whole game and it's just yeah. way too taxing yeah i'm gonna say they hold them all right they're not gonna drop 40 like the bears game uh because the jets have a respectable defense like borderline super bowl defense probably yeah. super bowl um hmm i'm gonna say a 28 to 6 so okay. i think they hold them away from 30 but i also think andy Reid and the chiefs go with more of a ball control get out of there with you know healthy and everything type of style run the ball a little bit more with isaiah pacheco get him going clyde edwards a layer um mm -hmm. that's how i see the game going so yeah. i'm gonna say 28 to 6 I'm going to go 30 to three chiefs. I, I think they go off <laughs> this game as well. I think the jets, I think we talked about it pressure either creates diamonds or bust pipes. I think this is when the pipe gets busted, right? It's Q one. It's the first four games of the season, first quarter of the season. I think this is going to be the telltale sign where it's like, Hey, Salah, uh, Nathaniel Hackett, you know, the defense hit social media and they told y'all that we want a different quarterback. This is the game. So I think, yeah, they go 30 to three Chiefs, new quarterback, Simeon's in there. Uh, they maybe get ready to trade for another quarterback in the future. Uh, maybe Wilson's on Jimmy that trade Garoppolo. block. <laughs> Jimmy Garoppolo, 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 whatever it is. <laughs> uh, but figuring that out because the Jets, for just sports in general, man, they need a new quarterback. They need it um, for the moment being until Aaron Rodgers gets healthy. And I don't know if he'll, he'll be able to get back for the playoffs because I don't think they'll get there. So, yep. Big big loss by the by, by the Jets this game. It's gonna be funny because a lot of the Swifties that just got into football and don't actually know like anything about football are gonna look at this like this is such a big win, but they're not gonna understand that like they're easily supposed to win this game. Um, anyway, so we'll go rapid fire here. Broncos head to Chicago. Both teams are zero and three. I'm expecting a tie. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say the Broncos win this game. Yeah, I think Luke Getzey is that pedestrian of an offensive coordinator yeah. that the Broncos still have some talent on their defensive side. Don't forget about that. Um, Marvin Mims and the offense. Plus, yeah, Sertain can shut like just completely shut down DJ Moore. Then yeah. who do you who are you throwing to after that? Cole yeah. Komet. Like that's Total about God. it. You gotta you throw know, God or, or run it with Justin. <laughs> yeah, so I got I got the Broncos. I actually think this could be a blowout. I think this could be a huge yeah, like Payne's pissed. Like yeah. I think this is like thirty three to like I'm gonna say thirty three to twelve. The Bears oh. get four field goals. Okay, I'm gonna go twenty four to seven. Um, twenty four to seven Broncos. Russell's playing pretty darn on decent, so I think he plays well. I think they hold on to the football. I think they run the football pretty decently. And yeah, they just they crushed Chicago from scoring points. The reason why I Chicago won't be out of it too much is because they were able to fight back against the Buccaneers. So yeah, I, I think this one will be a twenty four to seven Broncos. I think we're gonna hear a lot of boos. Um, this is in Chicago, and I I could see a Bajan hooking, uh, if if you will. Yeah. I think he could come in late in this game that's out of reach. Fourth quarter, yeah. Maybe put together a decent drive where the fans are like, we want to see Bajan. And then, I don't know, man. I think the Brock Purdy emergence has kind of changed people's minds about young quarterbacks yeah. that haven't been drafted high. Personally, Agreed. that's just how Agreed. I feel. Um, you could see it with Aiden O'Connell. You and I have been, you know, Taylor, and Taylor Heineke too. There. Taylor Heineke too. He's an emergence yeah. of a great quarterback who d doesn't really get much shine. He went to XFL for a while, USFL, like. Won the backup Heisman quarterback class. for the uh, the Battle Hawks. There, back up. There you go. There you go. You know what Heineke was known for? The Bud Light uh, seltzer, the <laughs> the the shotgun in the locker room. <laughs> yeah. That's what he was yeah. known for. Yeah. It's so funny that he ended up becoming something. Good for him, though. Happy for yeah. him. 
Uh, two and one Steelers take on the one and two Texans. It's so tough. I, I actually yeah. kind of lean Houston. I'm going to stick with Pittsburgh because I don't want to go too like, oh, yeah. I mean, the Texans have had the Jaguars number for whatever reason every time they play each other, it seems like. So I'm just going to kind of write it off as that. I don't want to write off C.J. Stroud, but I think that Steelers defense is something else. But I think Matt Canada is going to do his best to call plays that keep the Texans in it. So um, I'm going <laughs> I'm going to have the Steelers winning 20 to 14. So I'm going to go 21-14 Steelers. Um, T.J. Watt, I think, strengthens his uh, candidacy, candidacy for Defensive Player of the Year. I, I think he's playing lights out, and it's really cool to see. Um, of course, Quan Alexander, I got to shout him out. I'm playing linebacker for that team. So, yeah, um, 21-14 Steelers on this end. Vikings head to Carolina, both 0-3 teams. Oh, boy. Skull. Um uh, if if the Vikings Skull. lose this, how do you even bother keeping Kirk Cousins? Like, yeah. I, I mean, I, I trade just, him at that point. Yeah, playing, I mean, the he's guy lights out. He doesn't deserve to be on that team. I think he's too good to. I mean, yeah, I don't think hell trade him to the Jets. <laughs> you know, like for real. <laughs> I mean, I, I said Garoppolo because I know Kirk has a no trade clause, but would he turn down a trade to the Jets? I, I don't. I, not the way it's looking. I don't. I don't no. think so. I'm going to take the Vikings in this one. Um, I think Andy Dalton might come in at some point, but I think Bryce Young's going to start. So I'm going to go. Eh, I'm going to actually say the Vikings win this pretty easily. I'm going to say yeah. 30 to 17. They're a better team than even maybe Seattle, but it just hasn't worked out for them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go Vikings 27 to the Panthers seven. Uh, Frank Reich has to pass over the sticks, dude. It's the offensive play call is not going well. And uh, it, this is the, the make or break game, the bus, the bus pipes game, right? Or create diamonds type game. And I don't think they're going to be able to pull this one off. And I think Frank's going to have to pass the sticks after this one because it hasn't been going too well for the, for the Panthers there. 